So, Gadurian's Blitzkrieg in case blue has happened, war game, and I am about to erase this ridiculous faces that I put on the plexiglass because I'm about to call the game after like um, a little over four turns in out of 178. So I just wanted to give my first impressions because this certainly isn't a review uh, given how little I've played relatively despite hours and hours of play um, and, and talk about my experience with this game so far. So first I want to go over some lessons I learned. First off, when I set up, I should have really just perfected the map layout because, uh, for instance, this table right here, oh, bumping into stuff, um, you may notice that like the map is um, really at the edge of this when I should have jutted out the table a little bit. I really should have thought about how I was going to balance out tables on the case blue maps in that um, I should have set it up in a way that there wasn't this large segment because I can't reach over to the Rostov um, um, area. Uh, so I need to set up in a way that I can reach in the middle of the map better. The plexiglass I set down, one is uh, I should have um, probably cut it up a little bit just to um, because the big three by three foot plexiglass um, is really hard to lay down and shifts the map when I put them down. And that's another point. I really should have perfected um, how I laid the map out, uh, especially when it comes to you can see this part right here jutting out map uh, B and A. Uh, there's a lot of um, hex shifting there like you can see how it uh, doesn't lay out right and that's really um, that was really a bother especially since that was a really counter dense area um, I'm not too displeased with the rest of my setup but generally the table should have been sorted better and the map should have been laid out better and arguably I could have um, spent a little extra time setting up the pieces by their actual unit ID um, which would have taken much longer setup, but this game's long enough that it would pale in comparison to the actual full play time of this game. I'm relatively happy with the other stuff. Um, maybe I've gotten a little bit more um, uh, markers and stuff uh, just to denote places. Maybe I've written more notes on the map. So let's talk about gameplay, though. Gameplay errors. I think I really misplayed the Germans. I should have not used internal stocks so early because I spent the next few turns of the game limping along with the Germans. They couldn't really attack. Um, we're supply starved. The Russians were just building up supply and defending just fine. So, yeah. Um, the, um, I mean, the Germans did maneuver pretty strongly in the first turn, but at a huge cost, I feel. Uh, this turn was going to be a mud turn, uh, too, so the Germans are on a timer. Essentially, they only have a certain amount of time before winter sets in, and there's a huge step where uh, you all the troops get frostbite and all the trucks after mud a mud turn, when it freezes, the, all the trucks break down and the track vehicles mess up. It's really just a nightmare for the Germans. So they're kind of, the countdown's there. And so the skull of the Germans to seize as much territory as possible before um, that winter sets in. And then there would have been the counteroffensive in the next few game years, um, which you know I just simply don't have time for. Uh, I had a little motivation problem doing the turns quickly um, the, this last month, but also it would probably take like even with dedicated turns and stuff like half a year at least to play this game fully through um it's kind of the it's really a monster game and it's just the stuff of legends but what do i think of the game um i i really really well first off i really like the series i think it it's a really clever um take on 
campaign campaigns and uh, World War kind of 1940s to 1950 era stuff. Um, it is really about supply lines in a way that no other operational level games have provided for me. Um, though I haven't played too many of them. It, it really kind of has this great idea um, that in order to attack you have to consider where your supply stands and it you know, makes this thing where you can threaten enemy supply lines really effectively in this game. And that affects their attack as well as their ability to feed their troops. It's not just about feeding troops, it's about actually being able to coordinate attacks which I think makes a huge difference compared to other games of a similar genre. Uh, the rules are extensive though. They're well written in my opinion, but they are extensive. Um, we have a... The main series rules, and this is from a different game, it's the 4.2, but the 4.0, the rules are about the same written, but this is a, you know, like, uh, 50... 45 page rule, 40 rule page rule book. I thought it was 60, but apparently not. Plus another uh, 10 pages of game specific rules. Uh, I think they're well written. I think most of the mechanics in this game are relatively simple. It's just that there's a lot of them. Like the rules for aircraft combat, the rules for rolling dice in the combat table are all pretty straightforward. Like there's not like a billion uh, plus ones and minus ones to the die roll modifiers you have to keep in mind. It's really just like you only add like one uh, die roll modifier and just look at the column and, and there's really not um, a lot of special things to take into account. It keeps that relatively um, straightforward and I think that's great. Um, it's pretty standard fare in a lot of senses, like the whole hex and spending movement point stuff is in a lot of these games. The combat values and the combat table is a pretty consistent feature, though this one handles it slightly differently with um, having essentially multiple combat tables depending on what terrain you're fighting in. Um, it also has a clever thing where um, certain units with um, armor values, the yellow coated um, unit IDs, for instance, double their attack value in certain terrain. Um, artillery is kind of interesting in that um, you need a lot of uh, supply points to effectively use it. The air game's pretty straightforward, but also really interesting what it does. I think the hardest thing is that this game's just really a lot of heavy mental lifting, even with relatively straightforward rules. I know one person I was talking to who played this series said you essentially have to play your turn twice, one to plan it out extensively and one to actually execute the damn thing. Um, and I feel that's relatively true, I, but thankfully I enjoy that. So I, I'm pleased um, in that sense. Uh, in this particular game, now all the games are pretty different, uh, especially with like counter density and terrain and stuff. Uh, this one has a lot of wide open fields, especially in like the Case Blue area. There's barely any like blocking terrain and stuff. Guterian Split Creek 2 is more foresty, but still it's relatively open. The counter density is insane. Uh, like you can look at this clutter of stacks. Like I don't think you could play this game without tweezers. Um, so if you're ever going to play one of these games uh, of a denser counter density, use, use some good tweezers, some hobby tweezers with the long reach and um, such. Um, yeah, as far as recommendation, I mean, I can't recommend this game. It's too big, it's too out of print to afford. I would say Gadurian's Blitz Creek 2 is actually, it's relatively available, and I'd say um, uh, it's, it's worth the play even without the Case Blue map. Um, but the way I would see it is like there's a bunch of games in the series, and I would start with the easier games in the series and build up to this one if you're really going to dive in and be insane like I am. Um, but the thing is, one thing I really like about this version of an operational combat series game is that it has like all the rules features in it. Like a lot of games don't use truck extenders, the things that uh, stretch your supply lines further down enemy territory. 
Uh, this game uses like double railroads, which is a different rule, which a lot of games don't use. Uh, it uses rail extensions, like converting rail to your side so you can use it, which again, games don't use much. Um, so it generally has all the bells and whistles, which I really like. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have is naval rules uh, to any real strength, which I'm okay with. The game series isn't really, its strength isn't really simulating naval stuff um, as much as land and air. It's a land and air based uh, board game. But overall, I really like the bells and whistles in this game. I, I like the style of combat. It's about laying a lot of pieces in like walls, even though that creates a lot of counter density issues. It also means like you have these really elaborate fronts and uh, elaborate positioning scenarios as opposed to like choke points and in, um, in low counter density terrain um, fights. Uh, though I think uh, if you want a lighter version of that experience, a quicker version, I think Blitzkrieg Legend in the game series does like the wide uh, fronts Beyond the Rhine is a relatively big game, but I think does that as well. I haven't, those are two, unfortunately, I haven't played. I've played um, Reluctant Enemies, which is like the most intro of these series, uh, Tunisia 2, and a little bit of uh, Burma, which uh, Tunisia 2 and Burma are very different, um, especially Burma. It's a, it's a testament to the series how different each game is from each other. Um, yeah, I, I think um, ultimately I really enjoyed my time with this, even as little as I played. Um, I got hours and hours of play out of it. And even as, um, and, and I'm going to come back to this eventually. I think my, my main lesson is perfect the setup of the game, like lay out the tables perfectly. And I, I need some practice with the Germans. I'm going to do like a starter scenario of this, of like Kadarian's Blitzkrieg 2 or Case Blue uh, and get used to proper maneuvering in this particular game. Uh, and then when I have like real table space that I can lay out for longer than the time I have here, um, you know, essentially I'm gonna really just need to find a basement somewhere. Um, then I'll come back to this and really play it. Uh, until then, I'm probably going to stick to the smaller games, like the go back to like some of the one map games as opposed to like the 16 combined with these. The it's just really insane how many maps are connected together here. But yeah, cleanup's going to be a pain. Um, and that's really most of what I have to say. Um, while it's a game that I can't really say is worth a buy because it's just so impractical and also Case Blue's out of print really heavily, it's a game where if you have the opportunity to try it and are kind of in-depth enough to give it a go, it's worth it. It reminds me of one time where I got to play a... Um, the Lord of the Rings, uh, War of the Ring Collector Edition, a game that comes in, a, it's a version of a kind of a war game about, you know, the Lord of the Rings kind of saga that, and this version comes with like painted miniatures, a uh, huge wooden encased box that simulates, that looks like the book of like, a, um, of one of the, looks like the Silmarillion or something. Uh, just an absolute treat to see and somebody brought it to a convention I played and I got to try it out and I tried it out because it's like one of those once in a blue moon experiences that you really won't get to try um, you know like if you see it you grab an opportunity to try it and I had an opportunity and I wanted to try case blue um, I'm really you know one day I'm looking forward to coming back to this and really giving it a strong attempt Maybe even roping in some uh, friends to do, like, I wouldn't say, like, have a consistent opponent, but, like, convince them maybe to do, like, counter-pushing and stuff. Um, I'm not really sure how that would work out. I think it, it is feasible. There is an online um, playable version of this game using a program called Vassal, and 
you know, if you can convince somebody who has the game to give it a shot with you and willing to learn the rules and stuff, I think that would be an interesting thing to try. But then, but again, this is like the game you go to after you learn the basic OCS games. Uh, it's funny, I actually, the first um, two games I got of the series was Reluctant Enemies, the real intro one, one map, uh, short game, and Gudurian's Blitzkrieg 2, which is the top half of this uh, massive monster. So, yeah, I, I, I think um, I think I had a good time, but I have to end it now, and hopefully I'll return to this one day. But until then, I have a lot of OCS games to try. I think I have, like, every one of them, barring, like, the sequels to others or the prequels. Like, I don't have Peter Rain Split Creek 1. I, don't, I have DAC 1, but I don't have DAC 2. Uh, that kind of stuff. But I have, like, I, I don't know, and I don't have to pre-order ones, obviously. So, you know, that's just, like, you know, I could spend, I, I'm going to spend years enjoying this series, and I hope I can find people interested in it uh, as well. Anyways, this is, um, this is Case Blue and Gadurian Split Screen 2. Freaking anime.